Welcome, my political friends of the interwebs. Today, we are going to talk about democratic uh, backdooring. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's not the right word for it. Uh, I don't know how many of you know this or not, but um, Jimmy Carter, <coughs> James Carter, the former President Carter, he, um, he came out today slamming, uh, slamming Barack Obama, President Obama, for uh, apparently uh, a culture of, uh, shall we say, violating people's human rights. Something to that effect. I know sometimes it's always hard to, uh, or sometimes you can't always decipher what exactly uh, Jimmy Carter's got on his mind because, you know, he suffers from something. <laughs> I think it's dementia or Alzheimer's or something. But anyway, basically Carter came out today and said that the United States because of their drone strikes and whatnot, are um, violating uh, human rights around the world, blah, 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 blah. And uh, it, was, it really put me in a, in a bizarre uh, place, mentally, because I, you know, normally every time Jimmy Carter opens his mouth, I like to, you know, kick him in the teeth. <laughs> I do. I like to kick him in the teeth. But I'm in a kind of a conundrum right now because truthfully, you know, Obama's an idiot. So it's, it really, it's been bizarre lately. If you've noticed that you've got, you've got Bill Clinton backdooring Barack Obama on one side. You've now got Jimmy Carter backdooring him on the other side. I almost feel sorry for the bastard. Almost. Let's not get carried away now. Um, yeah, I find it really strange that, that former Democratic presidents um, are, are literally coming out in opposition of, of uh, a sitting Democrat president. Don't you find it kind of bizarre and interesting all at the same time? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's really weird because like with friends like that, who needs enemies type of thing, you know what I mean? And I think to myself... Really, you know, Bill, I mean, I kind of get the Bill Clinton thing. Because I think Bill Clinton realizes that Barack Obama is not going to get reelected at all. He's just not. And I think that, I don't know, it's going to be weird. I've got some very bizarre conspiracy theories on this, but I think I might keep them to myself. Um, but, you know, here's the thing. So he knows that Hillary may have a chance four years from now to run against Romney, Okay. Of course, Romney would be the incumbent, which, you know, I don't know. I guess a lot of that will all depend on whether he's able to turn the economy around or not. But it's funny because although Bill Clinton is, for all, is he's pretending to be campaigning for Barack Obama, some of the things that he has said, in fact, somebody, one of the Democratic pundits uh, called uh, Bill Clinton Joe Biden on crack. Because, <laughs> you, know, you know, Biden can say some really ridiculous things sometimes. You know, but uh, but yeah, apparently you know Bill Clinton was taking the the cake. So I don't know. What do you guys think about this? I mean, is it bizarre or what? You know, I've never seen this before. Where where uh, former presidents from from the from the uh, party that's in power uh, comes out and backdoors them like this? That's just kind of amazing to me. You know, it it would have been like if. Um, well, not quite as bad, but let's say Ronald Reagan hadn't had the, the Alzheimer's. And if he would have came out and started backdooring, say, G.W. Bush. <laughs> you know, it's just really, really bizarre. Um, now, having said all that, you know, I mean, I don't know. Do you, do you agree with uh, Jimmy Carter? Here's the thing. Here's the troubling thing for me. Jimmy Carter's a nut job. All right. I, I mean, for the last how many years has he been running around from every third world despot he could, basically nut hugging them? I don't know what he's going to do when Chavez dies. I mean, it, it's going to be like he loses. When Chavez dies, it'll be like he lost his best friend. You know. I mean, it's it's going to be really interesting. But I, I I'm in a real tough spot because I really hate like hell to come out and say anything. In favor of uh, of Jimmy Carter, because like I said, Jimmy Carter, you know, he's kind of crazy, but kind of has a point some ways. I mean, you know, Obama's taking the easy route when it comes to war. 
You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's there's pros and cons about this, and arguments to be made on both sides. And I would make arguments on both sides of this. But he literally has indiscriminately just used drones. He, in fact, somebody called it a new type of warfare called drone warfare. Kind of sci-fi. It's kind of scary if you think about it. But um, you know, there's you know no muss, no fuss. You just you know fire a rocket from a drone and, and destroy a car full of people. The downside to that. Is you're destroying a car full of people, and there's a, always a good chance you got the wrong car. There's always a chance that you know that there are some innocents involved, some ch children, some women. You know, I mean, it is you know, it's it's a tricky situation. It's very indiscriminate, to be honest with you. No matter what they try to say. Now, is there some bonuses to that? Is there some pros to that? Sure. You know, not according to Carter though. You know, Carter does not see any upside to that at all, and doesn't understand why. President Obama is, is engaging in such uh, human rights violations. So, I have a theory. <laughs> but you know what, let me, let, let, hang on, let, let, me get, let, let, me, let me roll on a couple of other things. The other thing, one of the other things, the Jimmy Carter, oh gee, let's see who's interrupting. Hang on. I don't know. Okay, we'll just end that. Um, another thing that Jimmy Carter is uh, pissed off about is the Gitmo thing, the, the non-closure of Guantanamo Bay, the prison there, and some of the treatment, of course, he describes it as torture, of the uh, detainees, the prisoners at, that, at, at Gitmo. We'll just call it Gitmo because uh, Guantanamo Bay doesn't exactly flow off the tongue, <laughs> you know, which is why I think most people call it Gitmo. Um... And he named some of the torturous acts that were going on there, you know, I don't know, threatening sexual violence against their mothers and just, just you know, all kinds of stuff. You know, kind of interesting. So that's got Jimmy Carter's panties up in a bunch. <laughs> you know, between that and the drone strikes, he's not real happy with Barack Obama. Surprisingly, though, he didn't actually come out and name Obama by name, but all these things that he talked about clearly was on Obama's head. Uh, which, here's the other interesting thing about that. Um, the Gitmo thing I really find interesting, and really the drone strike thing too, but more the Gitmo thing than anything else. The truth of the matter is, is that you don't hear the, the media harping about Gitmo not being closed at all. But when Bush was president, that's all you ever heard about. Well, it wasn't all you ever heard about, but it was definitely in that revolving cycle of anti-Bush rhetoric that was coming out of, uh, out of the left-wing media. So, yeah. You know, when's the last time you heard any any of the major left-wing media outlets harping about torture at Guantanamo? I mean, it was interesting to hear um, Carter talk about it because I think it's it's, it's on a you know you got like a no a no fly list. I think you've got a, a, a no talk about list <laughs> when it comes to things, and uh, and one of those is uh, Guantanamo Bay. Is Gitmo? You just don't talk about it. You can't talk about it because it's foreboding. You know, which is kind of interesting, because like I said, it was it was not a nonstop hit parade against uh, President Bush. So, here's my theory. <laughs> Let's get to my theory. Jimmy Carter knows that no matter what they say, no matter what the left tries to say about George Bush, Jimmy Carter knows that in everybody's mind, except for a few nut jobs, in everybody's mind, he was the worst president. In modern history. He knows that. You know, he absolutely knows that. So, I have to wonder if the statements that, he, that he's making recently, and by the way, this might actually in some ways apply to, uh, to Bill Clinton, but in, in not as in the worst president, although there are some arguments to be made that Bill Clinton was one of the worst presidents we've ever had, and I can, I can definitely do a video on that. But, uh, Anyway, let me stay on point with Carter. Um, I just wonder if all this backdoor talk, this, this bringing up Gitmo and bringing up uh, torture and drone kills and innocent people, women and children being killed by drones, I just wonder if it doesn't have something to do with Carter hoping that there'd be a new champion of the worst president ever. <laughs> worst president ever. <laughs> you know? I just wonder. I mean, it just makes me wonder. Is that is does Carter have a uh, an agenda here? Now, having said that, I don't know that Carter has any agendas. I really, truly believe, just 
based on the things that he does and says as a whole, not just this incident, but as a whole, I really think the man suffers from dementia. But unlike Ronald Reagan, he doesn't have anybody around him that cares enough to yank him off of the public stage and say, your day is done. Anything else can, will do nothing but just uh, harm your reputation or harm, harm, harm your legacy. And that way, I, and in that sense, I kind of feel sorry for Jimmy Carter. I mean, that he doesn't have anybody like that in his life. Because Ronald Reagan did. You know, the people around Ronald Reagan understood that there, there's no upside to letting somebody with Alzheimer's run around talking. You know, it's just, there's, you know, it's, they're, not, they're, they're not who they were anyway. You know, by the way, those of you who have seen me clean this gun realize that I haven't ran a brush down the boards because I can't find my damn brush. <laughs> I don't know where the hell it's at. <laughs> I will find it eventually. I, it, this has only had 50 rounds put through it, uh, which most of you have seen me shoot, so it's not that dirty. Though it was kind of a dirty ammo, truthfully. Anyway, let me know what you think. Hit me up in the comment section about this. Do you think Carter is trying to rehabilitate his legacy by helping uh, destroy Obama's? Now, I say helping because Obama's doing a, a, a fair enough job of his own in destroying his, his, his legacy. You know, I mean, only the most extreme, hardcore, progressive nut jobs don't see it like that. Well, you know what? I take that back. No, those people hate him. It's the group that just before the extreme hardcore left wing nut jobs that uh, you know that are still th saying that he's a great president or was a great president is you know needs another four years and all that stuff. People like your Chelsea handlers of Chelsea lately, you know, <laughs> I remember her uh, when I slipped into Chelsea and landed on her her uh, her talk show, and she said uh, he needs another four years to prove himself. <laughs> you know, and I thought to myself, oh my God, seriously. You know, and this person votes. I pray to God she doesn't, and she may not. A lot of those hardcore Hollywood lefties never even vote. They raise money and they talk stupid shit, but, you know, when it, they can't be bothered to go down there and mingle with the sea of unwashed. Now, I suppose maybe some of them use um, absentee ballots, but, <laughs> you know, most of them are just talk. I don't know those Hollywood types. Anyway, so... That's it. I'm not going to continue to bore y'all. I just wanted to fill you in on that. I don't know. I know that some of you wait for what I've got to say to get your news, and I don't know that that's the smartest thing. But um, yeah, you know, it, it's just an interesting time we live in. It just really is. It's an interesting time. You know, I've never seen sitting ex president or sitting ex president, ex presidents um, backdoor a sitting president of their party before. It seems very interesting to me, and I just would love to know the real skinny on that. You know, I think, I think both of them have agendas, but I think that just from a liberal standpoint, they both would have liked to have had the first uh, quote-unquote African-American president be successful instead of an absolute, instead of being, becoming, instead of knocking Jimmy Carter off, off, the, uh, off the podium for being the, the worst president that this country's had in modern times. You know, I, I think deep down inside, just the liberal in them would have wanted him to be successful. And it's really tragic that he hasn't been in that. In that sense, in a historical, from a historical perspective, it really is too bad that he has been so horrible as president of the United States. You know, I think, you know, and, and not to get into a race discussion, but I think in some ways maybe he set back the black population for... Well, I don't know. A long time. Sad but true. I hope I'm wrong about that. I really, I really hope I'm wrong about that. I mean, I do see some, some, some people out there, in, in some minorities uh, or some, some black Americans I think would be uh, unbelievably fantastic for that job. Uh, Condoleezza Rice comes. And you know, in fact, you know what? I'm going to do another video on Condoleezza Rice. <laughs> I really am. I'm going to do another video on Condoleezza Rice. Because I love me some Dr. Rice. All right, anyway, listen, everybody. That's all I got for you. See ya!